Okay, so you're in the market for a mid-sized sedan. You've smartly examined safety ratings, fuel economy figures, comparison tests, and buyer's guides on your favorite automotive research site, shameless plug, and narrowed your interests from a double-digit field to an elite few. What's next? The test drive. That magical moment when you zip down to the nearest car dealer, kick some tires, and pray you don't botch the second biggest purchase you'll ever make. No pressure. What might make this process easier, more informative, and ideally even fun are some quick tips on how to test drive a mid-sized sedan based on Kelly Blue Book's vast experience test driving cars. Here it goes. To keep things simple, divide your sedan test into two parts, the parking lot and the road. Let's start with the parking lot tests. When I test drive a car, I sit in every seat, but making sure you're comfortable in the driver's seat is particularly important. Check access to the pedals, the position of the armrest, because you'll probably want to use those eventually, and the steering wheel. Make sure you can place it close enough for control, but far enough away that the airbag, if it deploys, will help you and not hurt you. Once the front seat is set, move back a row and see what the people who are going to sit behind you might experience. If you're feeling particularly empathetic, move to the middle position. Do things like uh, check the seat comfort and support. Is this somewhere you'd want to put somebody that you love for hours and hours on end? Yes. Every morning I drink my coffee out of this adorable mug my wife bought me. It's a critical component of my commute. If there's something you absolutely can't stand to drive without, maybe bring it with you. Make sure it fits. A less trivial example might be a car seat. Wouldn't it be nice to know whether installing that car seat will unacceptably compromise front seat legroom before you buy your sedan? Don't be afraid to get handsy. Actually touch the controls and the surrounding surfaces. If the audio and climate controls operate intuitively and the areas that you're going to touch the most feel nice, you might have a winner. If you own a smartphone, and you probably do, try pairing it to the car via Bluetooth. Also, listen to the audio system, explore the infotainment system, and, if the car has it, give the voice recognition a whirl. Okay, to whom? Mike Delano. If all that stuff seems easy to use, awesome. If not, imagine overcoming those same difficulties while hurtling down the road at 65 miles per hour. Something else to consider, is there a convenient spot to stow your phone near the USB outlet you'll need to plug it into? Also, are there any nooks to hide essential gear that you always travel with? This uh, medical tape, for example. From a normal driving position, can you read the text on the climate control, infotainment system, and gauge cluster? Pro tip, you shouldn't have to squint every time you want to crank the NPR. Sun visors. They're easy to overlook until the sun drops to an unblockable angle. So take the sun visors and move them around. See where they block and where they don't. It's the little things like being blinded that'll drive you crazy in the long run. Do you regularly carry large items like this oversized novelty case with a drone inside of it? If you do, bring it along with you and make sure it'll fit in the trunk. And while you're at it, double check the hinges. Some of them intrude into the trunk space, potentially damaging that bunk cake you're planning on bringing to Thanksgiving. Gush. While you're at it, examine the pass-through between the trunk and the cabin. A good one will have a wide opening and split rear seats, so you don't have to decide between your tripod and your charming British friend. Hello. Okay, last thing about the trunk, some sedans have seat releases conveniently located back here where you're actually loading the cargo, while others are less conveniently located inside the cabin. Okay, honest, last thing about the trunk, one really cool feature found on some mid-size sedans, including this Passat, is a hands-free opening trunk, the benefits of which are obvious, assuming you're carrying some very expensive camera equipment. Okay, part two. It's time to actually test drive that fancy pants mid-sized sedan. What's first? Parking lot challenge. Most test drives start on the dealer lot, which is a brilliant opportunity to test visibility in all directions, the clarity of the backup camera, how easy it is to turn the steering wheel at low speeds, and whether or not you have a sense of the vehicle's dimensions when you're moving. Basically, you just want to make sure that you're not going to crash the thing in the first three feet. Which I haven't. 
Hooray for me! This might seem obvious, but drive the car like you plan to drive it. Freeway cruising, stop and go in the city, sporty driving. Whatever it is that you want your car to do, make sure the car that you're testing does that well. Once you're up to speed, imagine yourself having a normal conversation with another passenger. Or better yet, actually have a conversation with another passenger. Hey camera guy, can you hear me okay? Hey Mike Amusio. That's how you do it. In the same vein, listen for squeaks, rattles, anything annoying. Maybe crank the AC all the way up to max just to see how loud it is. Remember, if it's annoying now, imagine how annoying it's going to be five hours from now. Assessing ride quality is really hard in a vacuum, even for a professional reviewer. That's why you should keep it simple. So when you're test driving your first car, see if you notice anything unpleasant or harsh coming through your hands or through the seat of your pants. If you do, take note and then compare that to the next car. Is it better or worse? That's how you know. No, seriously, floor it. I mean, somewhere safe, obviously. Among mid-sized sedan buyers, the base four-cylinder remains the most popular choice because it's cheap to buy, puts out good power, and gives great fuel economy. Is the V6 or the more powerful turbocharged engine a good use of your money? Only one way to find out. When not rocketing from stoplight to stoplight, try and see how the engine and transmission work together. Are these shifts reasonably quick and smooth? When you adjust the accelerator, does the car react predictably? How do the brakes feel? If nothing odd jumps out to you, it's probably a good sign. Bonus points if you can bring the car to a chauffeur smooth stop within the first couple of miles. Ding! If there are any special features that drew you to the car that you're testing, be sure to test those features. For example, this Passat has dynamic cruise control and lane departure warning. Now, if I were on a test driving this Passat, I might ask the sales associate, how do those things work? Or, you know, I could just freak out every time the car automatically accelerates or decelerates of its own accord. Oh God, what are you doing, car? No! We could go on and on, but those are the essentials. The real benefit comes when you apply your sweet new test driving skills to more than one car. In a field of similarly efficient, similarly capable, and similarly equipped mid-sized sedans, that's how the pros discover the differences that matter most. Nailing down which car is right for you can be a challenge, but as always, Kelly Blue Book is here to help.